Hey guys, happy Thursday. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, we are working on the hand stitched project tonight some more from the Wise Craft Quilts book uh, by Blair Stocker. So that is the project for tonight, guys. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and, and work on a project together. And here is how far I am on my hand stitched, I think I had this at the top, of uh, the hand stitched project so far. It is English paper piecing. We have our template pieces in here. We took out the center template piece yesterday. So making progress. This is that uh, the center area here. So right there. So you can see we're, we're, it's going to be much bigger than what we got going on right now. But we're going to start on the, here's my template, my uh, drawing page for it. We're going to start on these kind of pink flowers, pink petals around the outside of our little flower here tonight. So I'm excited to get going on this. Uh, if you'd like to be part of this project, there is info above uh, in the Facebook post and info below if you're watching the replay on YouTube uh, for joining. Just check out the Wisecraft blog post about it. And Blair will be doing a Facebook Live tomorrow, I believe at 4 Pacific time. Uh, that's That's 3. 3 p.m. for me here, Central Time. So I'm gonna be checking that out as well tomorrow. So awesome, guys. Thanks again for joining me. I'm gonna flip you around, put my book away, and let's get stitching for tonight. Okay, guys, here we are. Okay, so we are moving on to these outside petals. So these are those elongated hexagons that we'll be doing now. So I just want to kind of see how we'll be positioning them. I think they kind of meet up, meet up like that. So that would be one. Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to work on just this row. I'm not going to go out and start any of these other things. I'm going to stick to just going, you know, around and around in a circle here and see how that goes. So this center area are these, these flower petals. We have eight for that. Just kind of laying them out here so I can get a, get an idea of what we're doing. Oh, four Pacific. Uh, it's six central, I think. Oh no, no, no. Four Pacific is three central because it goes backwards. I used to live in New York and I, and my in-laws are in, uh, oh wait, Pacific. Oh, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Pacific. Yeah, you're right. I'm going forward. You're right, Jenna. <laughs> oh, it's one of those days. I was thinking New York time. I'm I am uh, an hour behind there, and then two more hours behind is is um is Pacific. You're right. So yep, six Central here. Good. I would have been waiting there at three. <laughs> um, it is up on uh, in the blog post here. If you go to the blog post and then scroll all the way down, she has info on her site about that. Sorry guys, it's Pacific time, 4 Pacific I believe. Okay. Um, all right, so first off, I am going to punch holes in my, my papers again. So again, the reason that I'm punching holes in the templates is so I can pop them right out. Like it was super easy uh, with, with this guy. We just, uh, we just took a pin, stuck it in there, and it was we were able to pop it right out. And so that's what I got going here. I got all the holes punched, and uh, we will do that with these as well. So just kind of anywhere in the middle. I only do one. If you're going to be pinning, um, pinning your your fabric to your templates, then instead of like gluing, like how we're doing, then you could punch two and put the pin in the middle of the two or through, through both holes of the two. I believe it's Pacific time. She's doing it, man. Now I'm all confused. I'm gonna have to look it up again, but I'm pretty sure she said Pacific. All right. So I want to use a variety of pinks for mine. Uh, so again, 
we're just doing these eight right here. So I think I'm gonna prep all those pieces and then we'll sew them on. So to prep them, I got my, my glue marker again here. So this is just like a little glue stick and I've been, uh, I'm glue basting. So I've been gluing around, getting a piece of fabric and then gluing around the edge. Okay, Blair is Pacific time. So yeah, that would be six central time. And uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome, thanks for that catch guys. Um, all right, so here's an example of, we've been glue basting all of them, but here's an example of one that we thread basted the first day. And I've just tied like basically little knots, just gone around twice at each corner. But I think the glue basting goes a little bit quicker. So we're gonna do that. All right, I'm gonna put him off to the side for now and let's just bring, here's my stack of pink and red kind of scraps. I wanna air on the side of pink. I want it to feel pinkier, more pink than red. And I'm gonna try and do different uh, fabrics than this, but if I repeat a fabric, I'm not gonna care that much. Like I, I'd kind of like this fabric again in it. So I'm just gonna start by picking my most pink fabrics. Like this one's pretty pink and we will place it kind of on there somehow. I want, um, I have the, the uh, printed side down and I will put a tiny dab of glue just to kind of hold it in place. I want at least, uh, you know, at least a quarter of an inch, uh, probably a little bit more around the edge here. So I'm gonna just trim that. Oh, you just glued these eight guys. Awesome, Rosalie. So you're ready to watch a movie and get stitching. That's the, the uh, English paper piecing is perfect for that. So, and I'm, I'm roughly cutting around here again. It doesn't need to be perfect at all. That's kind of the beauty of English paper piecing as well. One of those deals where it doesn't have to be perfect, but it still turns out just right. Okay, so let's glue these over an edge at a time. So I'm putting glue on my template and then pressing the edge down and I'm extending that fold, finger pressing that fold, extending it beyond the edge. And we'll just go all the way around. I wanna get that nice point in there. There we go. So we'll do this for all eight tonight. And I think we'll have time to stitch, stitch them as well too. You know, I do like this glue basting. It is quicker, but there is something special about hand, hand doing them all too. But another time, this is, this is good. I like the, like the sharp edges that I can get with, with the glue basting. But yeah, if you guys are just coming in, we're discussing the, uh, Blair. Uh, this is this is her project from Wisecraft, from the Wisecraft quilt books. She's doing a Facebook Live tomorrow at, oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna say it wrong again. It was at 4 p.m. Pacific. So that's what, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. That sounds right, right? <laughs> oh, you got two hand basted, nice Irene. Yeah, I like the hand basting too, but I don't know, I'm stuck on this gluing for the time being. Alrighty, so there's our first one. Again, we don't have to worry about these little itty bitty dog ears here. They will not be in our way once, once this is all done. Hey, Jean, 5 p.m. Mountain, yep, okay. So that's one, let's just keep going. I wanna find some more kind of pinky ones. This is pretty pink. Let's, uh, I'm gonna try and grab uh, kind of the most pink area here. So we'll kind of tuck this in. If I, if I get a little bit of an animal, that's okay. We'll go right there maybe. Oh, thanks to Tamara. 
Okay, I know I'm saying your name wrong again. I forget. I forget what it was. Is it Tamara or Tamara? Which one do you prefer? Um, Orphil has now 80 pound thread. Oh, interesting. So I've never used that before, Phyllis. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I'm using 50 weight thread for um, when I stitch it together. But yeah, 80. Uh, the as the number goes up, it gets it gets thinner. So that that 80, man, I can imagine that being super duper thin. That'd be interesting to try. I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to test that out. Just get rid of this little bit here. All right, let's glue this guy down. Oops, I put glue on the fabric instead of the, the template, which is perfectly fine. It'll work either way, I suppose. Maybe it's better to go on the fabric. I don't know. I'll stick to putting it on the template. Oh, you use 60 weight by Superior. Tamara. Okay, so Tamara. Was that right the first time? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But would a thin thread have longevity? I mean, I'm guessing it kind of depends on the quality of the thread. Supposedly the Aurifil floss is pretty good quality or so everyone so everyone says uh, Is 80 similar to silk thread? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I have never actually used Silk thread before but I bet you that's nice for a really kind of fine work Yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of learning a lot of this hand stitched stuff now too, like English paper piecing and needle turn applique and all that. So yeah, I could use some recommendations on what the best thread is. I think um, I like the idea of the 80, uh, the 80 pound or the 80, yeah, 80 weight. Okay, last one here. Okay, we got two. I'm gonna just keep going and maybe once we, like I said, I'm gonna err on the side of all my pinks first and then maybe I'll lay them out with our piece once I get a few going. Here's another pink, um, little uh, kind of dotty, pinky dotty fabric. Uh, after we get a few of these, maybe we'll start peeking at, at what it looks like. We'll just go, go right like that. I feel like I'm going through this glue stick pretty quickly. Ooh, I'm kind of cutting it close a little bit here, but I think we'll be okay. I probably should have given myself a little bit more of a seam allowance there. You should have wait. I should, I should give the 80 way to try. Yeah. Oh, another thing to go in the Amazon uh, cart, I suppose. <laughs> You like silk for applique, but oh, but it'll cut some fabrics. Oh, that's interesting, Jenna. Like, like linen or something? Is, is that kind of what it would cut through, maybe? All right. Glue this guy. Man, eight kind of feels like a lot, doesn't it? We're only on, only on their third one here. I like these though. They're, they're super big. I mean, <laughs> they're not super big, these pieces, but compared to uh, the things that I've English paper pieced before, I think these are actually maybe the biggest pieces I've English paper pieced. <laughs> We're getting there real close. So that's kind of fun. It's nice, nice dealing with these larger pieces. I suppose I wouldn't have to close my, my glue every single time, but I don't know. It drives me crazy having like an open glue stick, so we'll just do it so oh it's also in the 88 colors oh wow <laughs> you're so happy when amazon comes with your notions yeah it's becoming a it's becoming a habit lately that's it's no good here i'm trying to use things i have but then i'm also really having a good time playing with all these new to me things you know like this glue stick and you know, 80 weight floss and thread and, and all that. 
it's an experiment of um finding out what works the best oh zeb zeb's here there there he is he's just taking up too much space all right so we got three guys oh those are nice and nice and pinky Oh, I did see, though, that uh, Fish Museum and Circus, uh, where this is from, she, if you guys are on her newsletter now, she is doing another restock of guys on Sunday. But don't go buy any so, so I can buy them instead. <laughs> All right, I think those are... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this guy in here again. I know I have him on the smaller. I have him here, but it, it's, it's a nice pink piece. Maybe I'll, I'll grab an area that has a bit more pink in. Oh, the knicker knot. So, uh, Robin, I'll try and do that today. Um, I'm hoping we get, we get all the way that far. But, yeah. So, the knicker knot is, ooh, man, a way to, you know, those little kind of, we're at the corner points or at the points when we go through a couple times and you know every once in a while I was tying that little knot um, a knicker knot we learned that during the splendid sampler that is another way of doing a knot so you have that secure a secure knot at the point so we'll, we'll give that a try I gotta see if I remember how to do it I know I need to buy Phil but you guys so they had a fill. So she has like a, a photo of the characters that are going to be up for sale in her newsletter. And she has two that looks like it could be our fill. But, um, oh, she lives the next town over. Oh, that's so funny, Grace. Uh, but she also has these, she calls them pooping unicorns, I think. <laughs> so if you imagine this guy as a unicorn, so he's got like the fun little unicorn hair and you know, unicorn horn. But remember, but like think of his uh, body as longer and it fits a thing of orophil floss like this. And then it has like a hole in the butt that you pull the thread out of. I kind of want one of those guys now, but I feel like if I get one of those, just cause I feel like this guy could be the pin guy and then the unicorn with the thread could be the thread guy and they'd be friends next to each other. But I feel like I would miss out on a fill then if I if I don't get the um the one with the big phalange on top that we've named Phil already. So now I want to get both Phil and a unicorn. But I'm afraid that if I try and get two guys, one will sell out before I can get the other one. So now I have to like now I'm like oh man, which one should I try and go for first? Because they sell out like within seconds. So. I have to choose <laughs> and hopefully even if I choose I have to um, have a, a quick trigger finger anyway <laughs> for the one that I want so oh, that's my drama for for the afternoon is like how am I gonna get both of them <laughs> bad news so I still want Phil I feel like I'm gonna be missing out on the Phil Oh, you have the unicorn. Oh, you have to get Phil. Fun. You have to have the unicorn. All right, well, if you get the unicorn this time, then next time I'm going to have to get a unicorn. I'll, I'll go for Phil this time. You can go for the thread pooping unicorn. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, yeah. Marjorie, I, I don't think he would be down with that. That that would get a huge eye roll if I, if I asked him, I think, to do that. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be pretty funny, though. All right, we got four going here. Let's try and crank out uh, four more of these quick. Actually, let's take a look. Let's see what it's looking like. So, all right. I'm just going to kind of plop them in wherever. I just want to kind of see if we're getting that pink effect more than the more than the red. Oh, that guy can't go right to the next to the same one. He can go here. All right, so that's looking okay. Let's uh I want to try and see if I can use some of these ones I haven't used. Oh, this doesn't have all that much red in I or pink in. I'd probably get a lot of 
yellow and or I'd, I probably wouldn't get, I'd get a, like a lot of white in here, but uh, tell them it's a quality of life situation. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes over. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun though. I'll have to ask, see what he says. <laughs> see if I get the eye roll. All right, maybe we get uh, the, this pink gingham in here again, cause then that's kind of pink. Let's see, what else do we got? I mean, I could repeat things too. Oh, I kind of wanted to get like a little solid in here too. I like the idea of a solid every once in a while. So maybe I get another solid and man, I wish, I wish there was a little bit more pink again though. I suppose I could, I could repeat like this guy maybe. I could maybe get, yeah, I don't want, I don't know if I want a character in it though. But it is like that, that most pink. I do kind of like this guy though too, but he's pretty busy. I don't know, but I like it. I think maybe I'll do a second one of those. <sighs> or not repeat anything at all and I could do this guy again. Too many decisions. Oops, this guy's pretty pink too. I can tell it's, it's late, I'm having decision issues. All right, we're going with this, the end. They'll all be different. Each of the, each of these big petals are gonna be different. Decision made, that's what we're doing. Alrighty, at some point you just gotta choose, right? So, all right, let's get, wow, I'm not even sure if this piece is big enough. Uh, it's, this one might not work. Yeah, I mean, I, I probably could could do it, but it's so, it's so close. I, what if I angle it a little? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a little just too close to comfort. So fine, I'm switching it out for for this guy. I'm gonna repeat myself. Yep, it's happening, the end. We're gonna get that one there. Uh, glue, here you go. It's all buried, buried it in pink. This is a, is this another piece? Or is this the, that's the same piece I just had. Cause that's all I have of that piece. All right. Boop. We'll go, I gotta go kind of up like that. Cause I got a little nick, nick over here. I think I'll just cut all these out at once here and then I'll glue them all at once too then I can move all this fabric out of the way. All right, this is the first one. It'll feel like we're getting done faster too. We'll glue that one down, but let's, well, you know, I kind of stopped ironing these too, didn't I? This one I think might need to be ironed, but these other ones I think are probably okay. We'll end up ironing this when we're all done too, so it's not that huge of a deal, but now that I'm looking at these, maybe I should press. This one's okay. These two I'm gonna press really quickly here. Up by the kitties. We'll just give it a little press down here. Oh, much better. And this guy, I don't know where I'm gonna pick from here yet. but it does have a little bit of that red in and that's that's what we are kind of going for here. Oh, I know, I, I'm really loving this project too, Gretchen. It, it's just a nice, I don't know, it feels like a breath of fresh air and I don't mean that from the sense of that I'm sick of another project or anything. It's just, I love peppering these smaller projects, even if they, you know, end up small. Um, you know, there might be bigger projects, but if they end up small or just projects that don't take very long, I love peppering those sort of projects within larger projects because you still feel like you're moving around, uh, moving along on your large project, but you get those little bits of accomplishment in the meantime, you know? So I think this is great uh, for, you know, we're working on the I Love Home block of the month by Jacqueline Steves as well. And you know, we get it done and then we have a couple weeks before 
the next block comes out. So a little project like this is, is perfect. Okay, pink. Two more, here they are up here. Yeah, and new ideas, yeah, and uh, we're, yes, we're trying, it's not the same thing, like, you know, we're doing embroidery and needle turn applique and, and sewing and everything for the I Love Home, and this has, you know, it's completely different, it's handwork and um, some other things, and English paper piecing, and that's just kind of fun. All right, I'm trying to get as much red in here as possible, but there's no real good place. Maybe I'll... And I don't want to blatantly get an animal in there either, because I think your eyeball will go right to that, and I'm just trying to be a little bit more abstract. So I think I might... Maybe up, right up through here. I'll get a little weird shapes here, but I think that's kind of fun. Yeah, I think we're just going to go right like this, which is kind of odd, but I suppose if we don't like it, we can always change it too. Oh, the kits are sold out? Oh, really, Jean? Oh, that's interesting. So Jean says that the kits, the template pieces are sold out for this, but if you did get the book, the book has the sizes. The book does not have the actual templates, but it does say the style and the size of the templates um, you need. So um, I would just get the book and check out those sizes and then I would just Google for templates for those. I'm sure someone's done some free templates probably. Um, and then print them out on cardstock, the, the amount that you need. And I don't know. It is the wrong side of, side of the fabric. It kind of doesn't look like it, but, but it is. Yeah, can't quite fit that one this way. We'll go like that. Ooh, wow, this is getting tighter and tighter on here. Okay, this is our last one. Then we'll glue down the edges and we'll be ready to stitch. Yay, so we will get some stitching in tonight. Happy about that. We'll kind of lay it out first. Paper pieces has lots of different sizes and shapes. Oh, so, oh, that's good to know. So Jean, um, so paper pieces, that's where, yeah, so that's the company that produces these, I think. So yeah, you might be able to just buy the pieces. Um, they just won't be in a kit, but they'll be, you know, the needed pieces in theory. That's cool, yeah. So the book has the sizes needed in there. Okay, let's uh, glue these guys down. Oh man, I can hardly open that. Ooh, wow, I'm a little close to the edge there. I don't want my glue so close to the edge because I wanna still be able to get my needle through without touching the glue. So that was a little, a little close to the edge, but I'm sure we'll be fine. I get that nice sharp kind of miter here. I'm really excited about this. These petals, these pink, pink petals for this part. I, I hope that it looks like a flower overall. That's kind of for some reason that's been stuck in my head that like it won't look like the flower, and that's kind of the little design I was going for. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jean. Uh, I've been calling it like an olive kiwi. I, I have no idea. It, it's Zoya uh, nail polish. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. I was at the, um, I got a massage the other day and they had half off of their um, nail polishes. So I saw it there. I'm like, Hi, I'll get half off nail polish. That's in a fun green. <laughs> Oh, weird. I have like a little, it's like a little bump there. Oh, it's just, it's from, it's a piece of the template, like the, the punch left a little, little thing there. 
But I think once I sew it together, you won't you won't see that. So I'm not going to worry about it. But it did leave a little bump. All right. I'll probably get that glued down a little bit more, but we'll be stitching it right away. All right, that is the first one. Or the first of the ones we just did. Ooh, I actually really like, like this color with the pinks. It's kind of brightens, brightens them all up a little bit. All right, I'm itching to start sewing this. Man, it is so fun looking at your guys's um, progress on on this, or just like the colors that you guys have chosen and how far you are. And um, isn't it fascinating? Like, I love. I don't know if you guys are checking it out on the Wisecraft uh, Facebook page, and also and also in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. Uh, a lot of you guys are posting your your hand stitched English paper piecing project so far. And it, it always fascinates me how everyone can get the same pattern and they look so different and they are all just so beautiful and fun and pretty. And some are just really sweet and others are really kind of rich and bold. And I don't know, it's just so much fun looking at, looking at all the different ways that you guys are, are doing these. That's like the best part. And you never guess that, right? Like, oh, everyone's doing the same project. They're all gonna look the same in the end, but man, they really don't at all. And everyone's just so creative. It's fun to see. It's art, people. People putting their creative ideas out there, you know? And that's pretty neat. Um, nope, the fabric was not in the kit. So the kit, it's called a kit, but it's not, I mean, all it is is, is the template pieces. Oh yeah, the fussy cut ones, those are pretty incredible. So fussy cutting is when you on purpose put the design of the fabric in the exact spot that you want. And um, some of them are like, you know, there was one that I saw that someone did stripes, but they did stripes... You know, so they, they must have taken all these pentagons and put all all um the bottom row, like all these skinny rows on, on the stripe and then cut because then when they put them together, all the stripes are perfectly matched in in these circles. And I'm like, dang, that's that's some fussy cutting to get that just right. And getting like, you know, each each piece has like a a flower in the middle on some that are fussy cut and just look perfect and lovely and it's just really fun. Yeah, the I Love Home ones too, that project. Yeah, just they're all so different and it's just incredible how, how different they are. And they're all like equally as beautiful, you know? Just knowing that someone made those decisions and you know, that's like art. Someone made a creative decision and, and went with it, you know? Oh, thanks, Carol. Yeah, I'm using, um, I have a scrap bin that are like smallish scraps from all my um, fabric collections. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start using up those scraps. So this seemed like a perfect project for that. Oh, ones that dare to do directional fabric. I'm gonna have to look at that again. Directional fabric is where, um, like, all the motifs, like, all the characters or whatever in it are all go in one direction. Like, if you turn the whole thing upside down, then they would all be upside down versus something where it's, like, flowers all over the place and um, that, that you can turn in any direction. It's not the wrong side. It, it looks like it, but it's not. Um... Yeah, it it totally looks like it, but but it's actually 
I'm actually, it is actually the wrong side facing up here. Or the right side's, the right side's here. But yeah, it looks like it. This one, the dye goes through. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's interesting, like the different fabric, like, you know, one fabric, I mean, this is so clear that this is the, the wrong side and this is the right side, you know, but like with this one, not as much. It's just different manufacturers do it a little, a little differently and, or different factories and, oh, this is the last one. Let's close that up. Everything's a little different. And sometimes certain colors kind of cut through the fabric a little bit more too, I think. Okay, we are basically done with my, you know, I'm done with my pile of pink here. I don't need any of these scraps. Look, so I take all these scraps out. This is what always amazes me when you work on a project um, or a quilt. It takes, it like uses up no fabric. <laughs> I will never use up this fabric. I'm gonna put that back in my bin and it's gonna look like I haven't even touched the bin after this project. All right, I'm just gonna plop stuff on here, kind of any which way. I didn't put that one here because it's kind of maybe a little too much like that one. Maybe I'll put this guy here. Put him here. Maybe we'll Ooh, that's so bright. I like that one. So that's next to that one again. What if we go like this? Then this is awfully close. Yeah, I kinda I kinda don't mind that. I suppose we can always adjust as we go a little bit too. What if we go like this. Kind of like that. Could do pink here. Maybe it's, that's okay that they're next to each other. I don't know, my eye is drawn to that too much. I'm going to try and avoid those guys next to each other. Oh, this is kind of funny, this yellow going into here. I'm not sure I like that. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like how this this kind of looks like this pentagon's going into this weird circle. It's weird. I, I kind of like it. All right. I think I think I'm going with with this right here. I think I'm okay here. Wow, it's so bright. So when I get the greens in, so the greens are gonna start. The greens and the teals are gonna go up in these kind of corners and on the sides here. So I'm hoping that frames all this pink. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I think my plan for this is to, I think I'm gonna go all these sides here and then I'll go the next round, I'll go like that and then up the side again. So I'm what, I, what I'm saying is I think I'm gonna go around so I don't have these little gaps hanging. I don't wanna go back and do these tiny little gaps and I'm not gonna get one long thread to go around this whole thing, so I'm gonna split it up. I'm going to, um, yeah, actually I think I might start at this point, do a zigzag to here, then start at this point, zigzag to here, zigzag to here, and then zigzag, and then back up there, I think. I think that's the plan. Okay, that's what we're doing, decision made. All right, you know what guys, I think I'm gonna take a photo of this, uh, once you have a layout, it is always kind of nice to, <laughs> here we go, grab a, grab a photo of it so you can see where everything went. There. <laughs> have my, uh, my photo there. That will, that'll do. Enough to, in case all, this gets all messed up, I know how to get back to the beginning. So, all right, I'm going to scooch these guys off to the side. We're going to start with this guy. I'm gonna start at this point, go up to here, and then we'll immediately add that guy to it. Okay, let's get the thread here. Yeah, because I can see pretty easily shushing these all over the place and then not knowing what I just did. Spent all that time just now uh, putting it together. All right, I got, I got Zeb here. I'm gonna grab my needle. 
So I'm using a size 10 Milner's needle or straw needle. Oh, you have to do that in parking garages. You know what? That is not a bad idea, Gretchen. And I, I always wish I would do that and then I always forget. But I hate that. I'm always like paranoid of not being able to find my car. All right, so let's put right sides together. I think we'll go, we'll go like this. Cause I always work from right to left. All right, that's kind of in place there. Let's try and wonder clip this somewhere. I think I can plop it down here and that will do. All right, let's do the whip stitch again. So now here's, here's a case where, you know, we have that dog ear, you know, where it goes over the edge a little bit. I'm just gonna scooch that out of my way. And I'm gonna go through the point, the two points. And I'll go around there again. Night, Jean. Thanks for joining me. There, that kind of holds it in place. And then I'm gonna do one more. Where I um, kind of catch it back through the loop to kind of make a little knot there. All right, it almost looks like this side is just a hair bigger than my Pentagon side, so I almost have to ease it a little bit, but I think we'll be okay. All right, let's stitch, do a little whip stitch around, around the edge. I'm excited that we get a stitch a little tonight. I'm kind of hoping, although I don't know if we'll get that far. I was hoping that maybe by the end of tomorrow we would have this whole middle flower, like all these these eight pieces stitched on. But maybe that's a lot to do in one night, I don't know. I guess it depends how far we get tonight. So I'm catching, I'm just going straight up and then I'm, I'm catching about two or three threads from each side. So from each fabric and then I'm going a stitch length away and then grabbing, you know, the threads vertically through both, um, again, from each fabric stitch length away. And I'm not trying to grab the paper at all. I'm not going through the paper. I'm just going through the, the fabric I'm kind of making my stitches, maybe a hair big, just make them a little smaller, more like, an eighth of an inch. I'm going a little bit bigger than that, I think. All right. It's kind of fun working with these bigger pieces. I'm not as used to it, but man, I'm holding like a whole thing here compared to just like itty bitty things. Like in the splendid sampler, we were working on those really small English paper pieces. All right, so I'm to the the end here. So I'm gonna go through both points, make sure I get both of them, and then I'm gonna go through them again. And then I, I'm gonna do that one more time where I, um, oop, wow. I'm hitting against the paper a little bit. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna go through again where I go through the loop to kind of make that little knot. And, you know, going through it twice and then making this knot that's plenty secure. So, okay, I can get rid of my wonder clip. Let's see what we got. Ooh, it's getting bigger. So um, we got the half of the flangey on there. So now we gotta do one of those Y seams. So that's where we kind of have to fold this whole thing so it goes where we want it to go. So I'm still gonna go from right to left. So I'm gonna, uh, match these points up again. So I'll get this one over here first. And so now here, I'm gonna have to fold this just a hair. I'm not bending it all the way, but I'm folding it just so I'm able to get my next points together. But let's get a wonder clip in here. 
See you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, and if you guys uh, want the replay of this, it will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and the um, replay will stay here as well. So now I'm starting this next bit, right? So I got the pink side and the red side. I'm making sure I go through that point as if I'm starting a beginning row again. Even though I just did it on this yellow one, I'm going to do it on, on here too. Oh, the grandkids love my monster book. Oh, that's awesome, Susan. Oh, he's five and reads it perfectly. Oh, that is so cool. Oh man, thanks for letting me know. That's so neat. We have a little children's book that um, I did the illustrations for and my mother-in-law did the, did the text for called No Monster Here a few years ago. And it's fun. It's like a hide and seek. You um, look for the monster on, on each page. Yay, that's awesome, Susan. All right, so you see I have this bent a little and that, that just makes it easier to do this. So we didn't have this issue uh, where I had to bend that paper when we sewed all our pentagons on because I was able to take this paper out, which makes it bend perfectly, right? But since the paper is in here still, I do have to kind of squeeze it a hair. All right, get a few more stitches on here. Oops, I got a little knot up on top there. Okay, there we be. Oh, the book. Yeah, so it's it's on my website under books. Um, yeah, so penguinandfish.com under books. And it's also on Amazon. But if you get it on Amazon, it's still going to come from me right now. So, um, yeah, and, I'll, and I sign all the books and everything, too. So if you want it signed to, to someone, let me know in the, in, the mess, in the note to seller. But yeah, I forget the, the age groups, how that works for books, because that's pretty specific. But it, it is for uh, smaller kids, like, I don't know, two, three, four. Oh, man, I'm bad with them. Um, I'm bad with kid ages. I wonder, do we use batting on the end and backing? Um, Gretchen, I think it just depends how you want to do this. So I'm, I'm going to probably stitch mine onto just a larger piece of fabric because I think I'm going to make mine into a pillow. So I'm going to just stitch all the way around the edge onto a larger piece of fabric. But I don't see why you couldn't. You could just put some batting here and, you know, you could put another piece of fabric that's the same shape and do it where you sew it on and then turn it right side out and then it you'd have batting. I don't know. I don't know what you'd want to do that for, though. Yeah, I'm just going to stitch mine onto a, another piece of fabric, probably. Oh, awesome. But yeah, no monster here. It's a orange cover and it has a little kid in his underwear on the, on the cover. <laughs> All right, so I'm at this next point here. So I'm going through twice and then I'm just gonna add a little knot in here again. When, ooh, I missed that, sorry guys. Um, when you thread base, is it necessary to remove the threads? Oh no, so uh, Gina, I I don't remove the threads when I thread based it. It's perfectly fine if they just stay there. I mean, you're more than welcome to take them out, but there's no real reason why, I don't think. So yeah, like right here, I would just leave those in. This is my, whoop, this is my thread based one. No reason to take it out. I mean, you could, but why bother? Oh, that would be perfect. That's That's perfect, Christine. All right, so there we go. We got our first guy on. So our second one, I do want to start the second one because they have like points that meet up. So um, we're going to just keep going. I'll fold this down here and then I'll make sure that this point is matching up to the red point here. 
But yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have two on by the end of the evening. So that means I wonder if we can get six done in um, on Friday tomorrow. That'd be kind of cool. I would love to get this whole um, center thing done. Although I think we're on pretty good track to getting this done. Uh, I'd like to get this done before we start. Um, before we start block three of the I Love Home block of the month. So I'm hoping this is like a two week project. Guess we'll see. And I think, you know, again, if you're thread basting at all, I'm guessing it might take a little longer than that. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this glue basting, so it's, it's going pretty quick. If I was just chilling in front of the TV, I'd probably hand based it all or, or thread based it all. I don't know. There's a good accuracy though with with the needle t with the um, glue basting. So maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I would still glue baste it. There's just something comforting about doing it all with thread and needle. So it's whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm gonna try and put a little clip in here. It's kind of an awkward angle, but I'm gonna just go right like that. I'll take it off. Um, let's line it up again. I'll take it off once I get closer to the point, maybe. But it is helpful having the clip, um, at least, at least for my hands. I mean, I don't have to pinch it as much. Oh, they the yellow no monster here all together. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, bigger kids like like reading it. Um, it has like good repetitiveness through it and stuff. And um, the uh, little kids really like looking for the monster on, on each page. It's kind of like a, you got to find the monster. Who in the fat quarter? Oh, yep, that happened, Gretchen. So Robin, I don't know if she's in tonight, but Robin won it. Um, there will be another, I just found out what the prize is, so there will be another giveaway for block three. So block three starting up, you know, October, the first week in, uh, the first, like, whatever the first Monday of October is. Um, so we'll be starting block three, and then we'll have another giveaway for that, and it's a pretty cute giveaway. I'm excited about it. Oh, my mom's splendid sampler is... Well, it's technically done, so it's all sewn together and she's using it uh, as a quilt, but she's going back and she's hand quilting. It's all machine quilted already, but like stitched in the ditch, but she's hand stitching like a cute little running stitch around the square of each block. Kind of, It kind of just like frames the block a little bit. So she's casually doing that, even though technically it's a finished quilt, but she's adding, she's just adding that extra stitching. And I think she's about halfway done with all that extra stitching. But it's the quilt that they're using in, uh, in the Airstream. And um, it's the like little craft that she can do in the evenings uh, in the Airstream is just adding those little, the little stitches around, around the blocks. It looks so cute. I, I really like hers a lot. One of these days I'll get my done. If if we have a like a like a magic day, like if we got this done and we're like, dang, there's like a day left, what do we do? Um, <laughs> if there is, that's when I'll pull out my splendid sampler quilt and we'll work on the border. So I'm gonna straight line stitch quilt the border of it. And that's all I have left besides putting the binding on. So I just need to do a bunch of straight lines in the border. I'm not gonna do it, uh, they'll be probably about an inch and a half apart maybe. So they're not gonna be, it's not gonna take forever and ever, but I still want it to feel like a bunch of straight parallel lines. And then they'll cross in the, um, they'll cross in the corners. I think that's my plan. But yeah, so if we have a free day pop up, um, that's that's what I'll be working on because I really would love to get that done before winter, and that's coming up fast. All right, so we got that guy on. Um, let's get it to here. Ooh, I'm I'm could have been a little closer to 
that point, but I'm just gonna kind of push it together. Once we're done and all the papers are out, I think everything's gonna kind of equalize itself out a little bit. So if you have like a little spacing issues and stuff, I think you'll be okay. You have the book, how do I get the sheet for each block? Oh, um, the sheet for each block, like you guys receive each week. For the, Mary Alice, what are, are you talking about the, or Alice, are, are you talking about the, um, for the I Love Home block of the month? Oh, the Splendid Sampler. Oh, how we see the sheet, the sheet for each block. Okay, so the sheets for each block, that, um, that was before the book was out. So there, they, that's how they originally did it. They released it on those little sheets of paper. So little PDF printouts. And then when, when we finished, then those went away and then they made it into a book. So the printouts, um, the book is the same as, as the printouts. So if you're seeing people with printouts, it's just because they, um, downloaded them before the book came out. But if you have the book, then you're, then you're good to go. All right. I got a little knot in here. I think I actually got a knot in the end of my, there we go. The end of my threads just getting kind of loopy again. It's time to, time to trim it. I think Ugh, now I just put it right back in there. Get another needle. All right, let's try and pull that through. What's happening is that my the end of my thread is getting this kind of loop and that's catching on everything. So I'm just gonna trim that off. Maybe that'll help a little bit. That's why I like using um, smaller pieces of thread for these. Um, instead of these long pieces, because these long pieces keep getting tangled. Yeah, you just have the book. So if you have the book for the Splendid Sampler, you got everything. You don't, you don't um, need anything else. So, except for the bonus blocks. So they are doing the Splendid Sampler again, now that the book is out. But um, they are still having new bonus blocks. So bonus blocks that are different than the bonus blocks that we got the first time around. So if you see some of some pieces that aren't in the book, it might be a bonus block that you can download. So if you go to the splendid and um, go into like blocks and freebies, I think it is something like that. It's like the first tab on top. And if you scroll way down, then you can find some of the bonus blocks and those you can download right now. And those will probably go away after the project's done too. So, so those you should probably download. Marianne, I have not done any painting this summer and I'm like sick. Like I, I totally want to um, paint more. I actually, um, when we cleaned up a little around here, I gathered all my painting stuff and I have it in my little like office, like our, you know, extra bedroom. That's kind of my studio office. And um, I'm thinking of making a little corner in there being like a little painting area where I can have the paints out and set up already. Um, so we'll see because that was so much fun at taking those classes, those painting classes. I took some oil painting classes at the art college here, um, which is actually my alma mater. Uh, but it, it was so much fun. I had such a great time and it was just a totally new thing that I knew nothing about. And, um, I love that learning about it, you know, something that I always wanted to kind of learn how to do like the mystery of oil painting sort of thing. And, and I had a ton of fun. So I, I do want to, I, I just haven't done it on my own. I, it was just the thing I did in class because that's the time I could dedicate to it. Um, we didn't have homework or anything. It was just painting during the class time. But, oh man, I do want to set up a little area and have it out because I think that's going to be the trick. It needs to be out and ready to go. If I have to prep stuff, then I then it won't happen. But if it's all out and I can just pick up the brush and work on it a little bit, I think, I think that's how it's going to happen. So one of these Saturdays, um, that I have free, I'll maybe clean that up a little bit more and try and do that. Fred question. You're using polyester thread for this English paper piecing. Do you think that's okay? Um, you're probably going to be just fine. I mean, there's the whole debate that 
maybe it's not a debate, I don't know. But I hear people say that uh, you should use a thread that's similar in content to the to your um, fabric. But I used polyester thread and just whatever I had forever and ever. And, you know, it depends, I guess, what you're really going for. Like, do you want it done or do you want it perfect? Kind of, I suppose. Um, right now I'm using cotton thread just because um, I have it. And so I'm matching my, the only 50 weight thread I had, like the only smaller um, thread that I have just happens to be the Aurifil, which is cotton. And, um, you know, I'm using cotton, but I would be perfectly fine using polyester thread too, but I'm sure there's some people that would say no. Um, did you frame your pieces and display for, oh, for the paintings? I did not, but I do have some of them taped up onto the wall. Um, they did have a show. Let's see, can I, uh, you know what? I think we'll end there. I'm going to tie this off. But I, they did have a show of, um, people who took the continuing ed classes. And so I had a, I had a few pieces in that show. So that was kind of cool. So I had to take them down from my wall and, and they framed them up kind of nice and hung them on the wall. And uh, now I have them back and I have them taped back up to my, taped back up to my wall. All right, let's see. So this is ultimately how we want to do it again here. I just wanted to see it again. There. Well, we got two completely sewn on. It's kind of funny. Funny with just the two. <laughs> it's like a little creature. It's like a little fish or something. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, I'll leave everything right out here so we can pick them up right again tomorrow. And I don't know, we'd have to super speed it, but we might be able to get all these sewn on tomorrow. That'd be pretty awesome. I would love to have this centerpiece done by then because then next week we can start all these pretty flowers and stuff or the, the leaves and, and the extra gray bits. But okay guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening. Alrighty. Hello. So here it is. It's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> it's going to get big awfully quick with these pieces, which is kind of exciting. But yeah, this is kind of a, like a fun point. This is the only place I think in the, Oh, well, there might be a few more actually. Yeah, there's a couple places that meet like four points come together and, and this is one of them. So like, well, this will be green, but another one will fit right in there like that. So anyway, we are working at it. I think um, I'm trying to see from far away, are we gonna get that pink effect? And I think once we get the blues and the, the greens back here, oh wow, yeah, that's gonna pop um, with the uh, that pink. That's gonna really pop off of, these blues. Okay, good. That makes me happy. <laughs> you know, you just never know, right? For sure. So, all right, we are cruising along on that. Ooh, technically we can pop this guy out because he's surrounded now. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow, tomorrow night. Uh, maybe we'll pop all of them out at once. We'll see. But awesome, guys. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. That's where I have all my replays for all of the all the projects that we've been doing, all of the live streams you can find there at um, youtube.com slash penguin and fish movies. And it'll also live here on Facebook on the Penguin and Fish page. So awesome, guys. Uh, be sure to check out the links so you can uh, find out more about the... Blair's live stream that will happen tomorrow. Click her blog post. And if you wanted to check out the book and all that, that is above in um, the links as well. So have an awesome night, guys. Have a great Friday tomorrow. And I will see you tomorrow evening. Good night.